So, should we call the uh, facility subcommittee meeting to order? And Madam Secretary, would you take the roll, please? Chairperson Doherty? Here. Ms. Del Rossi? Here. Ms. DeLay? Two present, one absent. We also have Dr. Jim Hall is here as our administrative representative, as well as um, Rick Underwood, who I'm spacing on his title. Facilities director, sorry. And we have, I, I believe we have members of the uh, Roger Stem community here tonight. So the first item on the agenda is uh, discussion of capital improvements, which I think there's a handout here. First item being the Collie Stadium project. Uh, Jim, do you want to just give us an update on that? And then we'll move right to the STEM Academy. Sure. On uh, February uh, 15th, the school committee voted to, um, I guess, redirect or allocate the remaining monies from the $1.4 million uh, to support the installation of a uh, permanent uh, building. And there's a um, conceptual drawing uh, within the uh, packet. Um, it's expected that the approximate 300000 that's already been utilized uh, for equipment and flooring will be able to be used in this facility. Uh, so it seemed like the community was going to get better value um, for its money, and the uh, school committee approved that redirection of the money. Should I proceed, or do you want to comment on that? Or? I'm just wondering if you can tell us what the uh, timeline is for that. Uh, we're being told um, by the um, people uh, involved in that project that they think they're going to be able to get it done uh, for the fall um, sports season. But wow. it seems very aggressive, but uh, that's what's been estimated. Well, and so, th uh, right, so this was the project that was originally going to be modular. Is now we're doing a permanent building. We had another entity is, is pitching in some funds to make this happen. And it's going to be for sp the fall sports season. That's the plan. Hopefully, yes. Okay, so you can go right into sure. the um, items. So the STEM has been one of the major um, projects that we've been working on, and um, Dr. Bassari and um, Ms. Monroe have been involved in that. We've had numerous meetings with the city. Uh, the school committee approved us um, going forward with getting an architect, and the purpose of the architect was basically to give the school committee a projection of how many modular uh, units that they could get for the approximate $5.3 million that was allocated towards the project. Well, we worked with Mr. Vaughn in the city to get that RFP out, but no one responded to that request for architectural services. Uh, so we went back to the drawing board and uh, with Mr. Underwood and Mr. Vaughn and Connor Baldwin and myself looking at it, the OPM uh, proposed that a architect affiliated with his company could work under his licensure in order to do the work to give the committee an estimate of how many uh, modulars um, we could get based on where it would go and the terrain and all the connections available. And then we could um, marry that with the school's plan on what sort of classrooms they wanted to put um, in those uh, modulars that we could fit within the $5.3 million budget. Uh, so that's what we've been uh, moving forward with uh, right now, unless the school committee uh, told us to stop. They still think those architectural services uh, will come in under budget, but it hasn't been formalized yet with the OPM and his in-house architect. Did you guys add anything to that, Mr. Underwood? Or? No, that's pretty much the same development. So that's where we are with that. <laughs> And Ms. Del Rossi has a question. Yeah, so well, I was reading a part that it had said something about like it didn't match up with the OPM's contract, so then not, something else wasn't going to work. Right, so we were trying to uh, you know match the procurement um, piece to it, but it finally did get cleared with the city, where it's been approved that the OPM's architect that this company partners with can uh, have the services billed under the OPM's contract. Okay, and when is the OPM's contract until? Oh, it's um, open-ended for quite a few more months. Okay, so, all right, the, so it'll go until the project is completed. Yes, and that OPM initially was also for Cauley, but that's been pulled back, so now they're exclusively the STEM. So this so is just going to go full charge ahead? Until you all tell us to stop, we're charging forward. 
So I think what some of the concern of the committee was, or if I was in your guys' uh, shoes, is uh, is this going to be, um, are we basically going to be able to spend all this money uh, before it evaporates? And, you know, that is a real concern. Uh, right now the OPM is projecting if the architect gets his estimates in and they can go out to bid in the summer, we should be able to expend the money within the time period. However, if it comes to fruition that that doesn't look um, like it's going to happen, we're going to have to come back to you and I'll work with the city to make sure that we can uh, allocate those monies before they evaporate. So, I mean, that's a real uh, concern if they can be spent um, in enough time, but as of right now, it appears that could happen. I think that you're talking about the ESSER spending that's going to, has a, a finite date. My concern is how much time has already been lost and we're still not projecting to get it done until 2024. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to speed that timeline up. Uh, well, the, I'm sure it's gonna depend um, on the architect's result, but I have a feeling if you pay extra, you may be able to skip parts of the supply line challenges, but that may result in less modulars. So that's gonna be the the balancing act once you get to that point. And there's no way to not use the OPM. We have to use the OPM because it's over a million dollar project according to the city. The, the, the real stumbling block is getting the architectural uh, services to give you guys the real projections on what you can get. I think most people would say if you're only getting four modulars for 5.3 million, you wouldn't want to do that, but if you were getting 10, you know, definitely you'd want to do that. I'm sure it's probably going to come back between 6 and 8, but we have to know where the connections are going to be um, most viable and, you know, what the projected amount of modulars ultimately is and how that'll fit into the STEMS educational plan. So the OPM is secured until this project is mm -hmm. finalized? Yes. The architect is secured until this project is finalized. The architect, the plan is to have basically the OPM functionally hire the architect to work under the OPM contract. And how soon can this happen? Supposedly within the next few weeks. Because this just needs to happen. Yep. Any more space is better for yes. yep. everybody involved. I, I mean, mm -hmm. in. I get that it may not be ideal, but any amount of increased space there is better at this point. And right. I think at this point, I don't know what that, what is that saying that you have to steal the piper, rob sure. the, what, what, whatever that is. I'm not gonna say it right, but it, this needs to happen in, in the case for the STEM Academy because it, mm -hmm. It just, if we have everything in place, then I think we really need to go full steam ahead at this point. I don't know if anyone from the STEM community would like to ask questions or make comments to us. I know you guys are living the reality of this limited space every day, uh, but I'm certainly open to hearing what your concerns are and if there's any way we can uh, help. You would, I would ask that you go to that mic. Correct. Yes, but go to the mic to talk. Or we won't, because we'll hear you, but it won't be recorded for posterity. Okay. So I probably don't have to make my full remarks because um, I was sort of had things prepared depending upon how things how things proceeded. Um, but Greg Baseri, principal of STEM Academy, and it's been my privilege to be a principal and assistant principal for the last 11 years in the Lowell Public Schools. Um, so, and I just I feel like it's my obligation to represent all the students, all the staff. We have parents here, we have staff here. One of the assistant principals, Mr. Morneau. Um, and I just ask for your continued support uh, for continuing to move this plan forward. 
and I, I feel like everybody um, understands the urgency. And I do appreciate um, working with the superintendent, um, him, hearing, him hearing our concerns, working with Mr. Underwood, Dr. Hall, being very creative so far for coming up with some space, uh, and that's been very much appreciated. So uh, there's three different issues, and I know that um, Dr. Hall has sort of highlighted this, but there's three issues, and I guess ideally, um, and I know it's six to eight, eight would, be, eight would be a lot better than six, because what it would allow us to do is to move our kindergarten and first grade um, into the portables and have um, restroom layout that's commensurate with other schools in the Lowell Public Schools. So there really is a crunch on the students, on the teachers, on the paraprofessionals, where there is one toilet in the boys' restroom, and there is, I think, a couple of urinals, two toilets in the girls' restroom, and that is for eight classes of first through kindergarten. Um, and then there's, there's EL classrooms, there's other students that, that might be on the, on the first floor. And the other way that this is impacted is that um, our cafeteria, which uh, we are of, we have 850 plus students in the building, our cafeteria also feeds on those bathrooms unless you want to send the students throughout the whole rest of the school. So the second aspect um, is that it would allow us to repurpose other classrooms and also alleviate the situation on our top floor where you have second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade that have to use the same restroom. And it was designed as an older junior high school. Um, it, it does match in, in, you know, in planning with Mr. Underwood. It, it, we do have the amount of toilets and, and things like that and sinks, but it was designed as, uh, um, for a different purpose. And we do have a situation, uh, Mr. Morneau, Mrs. Crones and I have been creative becoming a team to before last school year. And we've repurposed uh, some classrooms with, with the layout, but we do have a second grade through sixth grade that have to use the same restrooms. And because of the situation, um, there's overcrowding in the downstairs in the basement level and the kindergarten teachers and paras will sometimes have to bring their children up as well, so you'd, so you'd have kindergarten sometimes waiting in bathroom that's also used by the sixth grade. So what this would allow us to do is moving the kindergarten and the first grade out, and I think Dr. Hall prepared in some of his notes previously, it does, it does state like the, um, if there were eight, what they would be used for, but it would allow us to make um, wholesale changes to the floor plan and, and make a much better situation uh, out of the facility. Uh, and lastly, it would free up additional spaces that could be repurposed for things like STEM labs, art, music, health. Um, we have our, our health teacher, Ms. Johnson, over here. Um, she is one of the many that, are on a, that teach off of a cart. We do have a lot in STEM, and um, even a lot of our allied arts facilities. We've been very appreciative of the city for, for creating spaces because it was better than not having them. It definitely was, but they really aren't commensurate for, uh, with like art facilities and such. And we are a STEM school, and our STEM teacher pushes all kinds of equipment all around on a cart, and we do not have any STEM facilities. We just don't have the space for that. So again, I'm very appreciative of the fact that the superintendent has heard us um, work with uh, Mr. Underwood, Dr. Hall. It has made a difference. Um, but just on behalf of the wonderful students, dedicated teachers, powers, administrators, parents, and support staff, our school community does need more which I am continuing to ask for everyone to deliver. Um, I do appreciate the time that everyone has spent in support of us, and I'm again urging you to move forward here. We are the second largest school within the Lowell Public Schools, and I do feel that we are deserving of facilities that will better service our school community. But again, I, I thank you for your time, and if anybody has any questions. Actually, I do have a question for you. I sure. think that we're looking at another year, right? Actually, more than that, because you got to get through this school year, and then you got one more year before we get to fall of 24. I'm wondering if it would be, if it would make sense to stop sending so many kids. Like, if we eliminate the kindergarten and say, as of September, the STEM will be one to. So is that going to help? Because you're talking about what was it? You said first graders. Using the bathroom with sixth graders? Second to it, I would second. say respectfully, if, if this is going to move forward, we, we can do one year. We, we have an excellent staff from the teachers to the paras to the administrative, uh, administrative team. We can do another year. We, we've been doing it. Um, the kids are receiving education. Our staff works very hard. We can definitely do 
will continue to be creative. We, we do want to keep our kids there. We but this, but I'm not saying not keep the kids that are already in. Obviously, you don't want to disrupt students. That's their school. But if you're getting another group of kindergartners in September, if we just held off from that to give you some more space, that would open up, what, two classrooms, three classrooms? We, we do Four like classrooms. Have, we do like having our kindergartners because it's their first experience in school, and, and we then we like to have our students and then get them ready for what school is like. Uh, especially school at STEM, and then we can keep moving them along. Um, so you're not in favor of something like that? I, Opening I would, four classrooms I would not for a year? No, and then it would sort of push the burden elsewhere. Um, we, we do want to keep all of our students. We love having our kindergarten. The teachers work very hard. Um, and it's, it's my belief that all the staff that work at STEM Academy, all the students that go to STEM, we want to continue to keep everybody there um, and continue to build on the good things that are already going on and the, and the staff that's working so hard. We have wonderful, wonderful students, great parents, um, a couple of whom are here. So we just, we sort of want to continue to urge this forward. But we can absolutely do another year. That's okay, because I, I can tell you, I, I speak for myself, but I think that there is not any intention to not move forward with providing you guys with some more space. You clearly are overcrowded and have been way too long. And the fact that we have continued to send students there and, and build and build and build without, you know, in terms of the number of students in the building without being able to build out the actual facility and space, um, I think is, is, it's at a crisis point at this point. And now we, we're another year down the road. So I just wanted to ask you that. Thank you. Ms. Rossi, did you want to say something? I, I mean, I don't even know if this is possible, but is there a way to get some indoor porta potties for them over at the STEM Academy or Not something, indoor, uh, something like that? Because the bathroom situation, so a, anything creative in terms of the bathroom situation Do for now? Yeah. Yeah. We are exploring um, some trailers or looking at those sort of options that we may be able to present, but it's in the preliminary research okay. stage. So that would be just a temporary like band-aid thing while we try to get everything else going? We have some, Mr. Underwood and I and Dr. Hall, we talk a lot and we, are, we all try to be very creative. Um, but I, I think a lot of it um, now that we have the full battery of um, students and staff in STEM coming back after COVID, because um, I think what was happening is, and Mr. Morneau could speak to this too, the school hadn't been fully built out um, and then all of a sudden it was built out so we have been very appreciative of the superintendent and the administration for hearing us, trying to come up with a plan uh, with us. So we, we are very appreciative of what's happened so far. Um, we just wanted to be here to continue to urge you to, to move along. But thank you. I don't know if anyone else who's here would like to share their thoughts with us. <clears throat> So this might sound a little repetitive, but I'm just going to read directly what I had already prepared. Could you tell us your name, sorry? My name is Heather Kondo. I've been a STEM parent for eight years and have had three children at the STEM, currently have two of them. I more recently have been substituting there. Over the years, it has been wonderful watching our once little school grow, but with that growth has come some, uh, some foreseen constraints there has been a lot of creativity with creating space, but the space does not accommodate all of our school's needs. We still have many teachers without a space of their own, teachers who have to travel from class to class with all of the necessary belongings to make their curriculum possible. We have limited bathrooms, two stalls in the girls and a stall and two urinals in the boys that our kindergarten and first grade all have to share, as well as the children in elementary art, both elementary and middle school music, as well as any children at lunch who urgently need the facilities. The middle school art classroom is in a repurposed locker room. Um, sorry. And though the teacher is a rock star at making it all work, it's a really tight space. It's not easily accessible. Both music classrooms are set pretty far from everyone else. They're um, actually in above the stage space in the cafeteria, so back there. Um, they're also not very accessible and we do have children with mobility issues in our school. There's also just an accordion wall separating the two rooms. You can hear everything between the two music classrooms for them both. We also, oh, sorry, I already said that. <laughs> Portables with bathrooms would give our youngest students easier bathroom access with minimal class disruptions. 
as well as open up more classroom space for our teachers who have to attempt to travel with all of their belongings and move inaccessible classes to a more accommodating space. It was relieving last year when we heard the school committee agree that we needed this and then disappointing to find out it was not happening because of the lack of bids on the job. This is for the future of our children. Please do all that you can to help the STEM Academy grow in a more effective way. Thank you. Anyone else? Please. Hi, my name's Roger Morno. Um, I'm one of the assistant principals at the STEM Academy. Um, I've been in Lowell um, 22 plus years in the system as a teacher, um, department chair, and vice principal. All I want to kind of comment on is the current kind of how the optics of how this looks to me as a resident, as an employee, that probably before next football season there's going to be a nice new building with bathrooms for the coaches and the football players to lift weights. I played football for Lowell High. I'm part of the Lowell Junior High Football Executive Board, so I'm well aware and I'm not biased against football. But as far as optics go, I'm really disappointed in what has happened. That's what I, I needed to say that. Because originally the modulars at the Collie said it's easy because they don't need plumbing because they're going to be standalone. Now these drawings, they have men's bathrooms, women's bathrooms. And that's going to be completely done at the beginning of next football season. The optics are terrible. I wonder if we have any explanation about that because I... I would agree that seems pretty unfair. Can we explain why that's happened? I mean, I know we went from modulars to an outside entity agreeing to kick in some funds to do a building, but why are we able to turn it around so quickly and we're not for the STEM? Mr. Uh, Underwood? Oh, I think he wants to share some thoughts. Yeah, I don't think it was intentional. I'm no. not pointing fingers at you guys like you did something wrong, but I would like an, an explanation as well. So the, the, stale, the stalling point on the STEM right now has been the architectural work. The OPM was hired um, because we needed the OPM on the STEM Academy problem because it was over a million dollars. The um, Cauley Stadium project was below a million dollars and we were able to get a, um, a private uh, entity to come in and draw plans up for that, which kind of just moved the project a little bit faster. But it was, the sticking point on the two was the cost difference. This, the, it, once you get over that million dollars, it, it requires designer and, and architectural work. But I, I thought we earmarked $1.4 million for Collie, so that's over a million. A, a part of that was, most of that was fiction, not most of that, but over $375,000 that, of that was for um, flooring and weight equipment, which were not part of the project. Oh, so the project itself was it, so much so smaller that we could jump some hoops in time. We were. Okay. Once it got to that next level of spending it just triggered a lot more um, cost. Okay, so if I could just follow up with one more question for you both or Mr. Underwood, whoever feels more inclined. I'm wondering if, I know we've made some improvements on space at the STEM. Is there more that we can do? We've got, I, I did see that music room that doesn't have a sound barrier. Could we put a sound barrier? Could we look at and I know uh, Dr. Hall said you were already look, talking about some other options like some portable johns, which I think won't be great in the winter, <laughs> but um, are we done with trying to improve what we ha how we have used the space? Uh, or is there more that we could be doing, thinking outside the box, trying to be creative to get us through the next year and six months or whatever we're really looking at before we have those modulars in place. So that's my question to you too. We are looking at a couple of more spaces available to us there. Um, one being bathrooms possibly in the locker rooms that aren't being used. Uh, Principal Perseri and I have been talking about that. There's also, again, uh, Dr. Hall has instructed us to look into the possibility of adding portable bathrooms there, which will alleviate, um, as you mentioned, uh, a short term fix until we can get to the permanent uh, solution. 
I have a question. Didn't we take a vote to just have the same OPM for Kali and for the STEM Academy? But all of a sudden, the same OPM could get Kali fixed? So the OPM's off Kali because it, he's not required to be on Kali. Um, so the city uh, combined the two projects to use one OPM when they deemed an OPM was necessary for both. We were able to split um, the stadium away from the OPM eventually because of the delays. And then after we were going to do that and we're close to bringing the module is in this uh, outside entity, and I don't want to say anything that wouldn't um, say that we're appreciative of their efforts, uh, galvanized another movement to get improvements when our spending was imminent for those modulars. So basically the city said, well, you know, you have that money you've earmarked, we'll kick in additional money for an OPM if necessary to bring the stick building um, to fruition. So that's where that is now. But uh, Mr. Underwood's right. This, this project is uh, much vaster and the demand for modular buildings is very high, almost to the point where people are looking to build regular buildings because modulars aren't cheaper anymore. But you know, there's a lot of time that it takes to draw up plans and put up um, permanent buildings too. Um, so this looks like the best way forward now. But I'm taking um, the subcommittee's uh, direction that you want us to move full speed ahead on that. And if at any time we believe we're not going to be able to deliver um, by um, the deadline, not to stop, but to come back and let you know so you can provide further guidance. But I'm going to tell the city and the OPM that we're going to continue to charge forward on this. Unless I'm wrong on that. But that's I, I wasn't aware we ever said not to continue. No, we are. So we're going forward. But, you know, of course, I never know what's going to happen at these things. But I'm, right. I'm, I feel good that, it, you know, we're all, we're all driving forward on this. That's what I wanted to confirm. Any other thoughts on this? I think we should have a motion uh, that we want to expedite. Right. We want to expedite the work to get the modules done and we want to look into other solutions to even just temporary solutions to uh, really uh, create whatever space we can with what we have there for now so that uh, I know you said you're up you're willing to hang on another year but I, I still think it's not it's not adequate We're, we are so grateful there's no classes in the hallways anymore. And so the motion would be to expedite the modular project and to continue to seek other solutions in, in, the, in the meantime. And that would be a motion by Ms. Del Rossi, seconded by me. Yeah. Oh, you want me to make uh, that's, fine. Yeah, that's fine. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. And then we'll, we'll bring that forward to the full committee on Wednesday. But I, I don't think we'll have a problem with it. I think that we are all, as a body, aware of the situation you guys are facing. Um, and I think it's really a testament to the school that the staff are, are, and the parents are still, you know, staying there and, and working with these limited, uh, challenging facility uh, space that you have. So thank you. I go to the next one? Yep. Uh, so I did have a, a slight update in this report on the facilities master plan. We did send out a RFP um, for a facilities master plan in January. There were no responsive um, bidders. Um, we're working um, with the city to see if we can identify um, firms that may want to uh, participate in this. And I did provide a link for, for the um, 2014 
um, master facilities master plan that's 1,200 pages long. If anyone wants to look at their um, particular school to see what was envisioned then. And let's see. So um, was that the the plan to spend five hundred thousand dollars on a, yes. a master plan? Because I don't, I didn't think that we voted for that. Uh, it it was just an RFP to basically bring back proposals to your oh, to okay. see if you wanted to go. For what it. about the HVAC study? Is there anything new to report on that? Do you have the update on that? So we didn't have anybody who wanted to do that either. Let's see. There was right. a full there was a full contract and plan put out um, right before the change of um, DPW commissioners, and I think that kind of got tangled up a little bit there. But there is a um, there is a contract that we could re-advertise that was already put out on the street, and, and that is one of the problems. It, it is. People are looking for the smaller jobs and, and not the, the, the bigger projects right now because it is so busy and, and everybody's working. So the, the timeline with a lot of the architects doesn't fit in on taking a six, seven, eight month, you know, month or, or one year job. Um, so it's been very difficult trying to, to, to find people interested in these bids. So now we're at item five, other projects and improvements. Let's see, so this letter was dated, um, so on February 24th, uh, do you have an update? What's happened on the water bubbler um, contract? Or could you? So the water bubbler, we did make uh, progress on the water bubbler. They did went out for a designer, um, and we did get one person that that bid on that. We accepted the bid. Um, that's in, in law right now, I believe. Um, waiting to get signed and started. Um, we expect once that to be started, it's a contract not to exceed thirty-five thousand, and that designer will put plans together for all the public. And once that happens, we'll be able to. Um, so we've had these water bubblers yeah and we just haven't been able to put them in and this all was because of covid that water fountains weren't deemed as as sanitary as safe these are better that is correct do you want to go on with uh what about the window hardware obviously getting the windows up to speed for the summer would be very helpful yeah. So the, the window contract also went out for bid. We um, we pulled it back on the first time because we only had one potential bidder. It was way above what we had allocate what we thought we were going to allocate for money on that. Um, past experience knew what we could get that done a little bit cheaper if we broke it into a multi-phase project. Uh, we did that. We put that out for bid right now. It was awarded to new uh, window services, uh, and they are hoping to be started within the next, I'd say, month. Uh, but I, I have absolute um, faith that we'll have all the windows in the district repaired uh, by the start of school year next year. Can we also think about for summer school, which is going to be much sooner, um, in, in terms of prioritizing? To replacing the windows himself. Ricky, I know, I know this is off topic, but just a thought. In light of the most recent horrific tragedy on Monday in Tennessee, um, 
I know a concern my son has brought up is asking if there's a possibility to make windows and doors in schools bulletproof. And I didn't know if that's something that would ever be possible. Um, there are some things you can do to make them safer. I don't think ballistic glass would be something that the district would be able to, you know, install in all of our, all of our schools. Um, we, we were talking, we, we are, there are plans to, or conversations to try to make our um, schools safer. I don't want to let's talk about them publicly and what we're going to do, but we are, we are looking at all, all different safety measures. Thank you. You're so I know you both are um, big proponents of playgrounds. We do have um, two playgrounds coming in, and I, I believe the STEM recently benefited um, from some playground uh, work, which is um, good past news. So it looks like the Green Elge and the Shaughnessy will uh, have projects completed by the summer. I'm not on this too, Mr. Underwood and I um, spent the day drafting a RFP for um, a five acre uh, campus, so land potentially that could be used uh, for central administration or a special education school. And again, this isn't something that um, has come up before, but it's just an RFP to provide the committee uh, option should anyone bid and have such a large parcel that they're willing to uh, put up for city or school use. So that recently was uh, sent to Mr. Vaughn as well for a uh, five acre potential campus um, or greater that may be available in the city. Um, so that concludes the report, Mr. Doherty. Thank you. And then the next item on the agenda is an update on the Wayne School Project. I know the Wayne was significantly damaged during the uh, that cold weather we had in February, February 5th. Yeah. And uh, we have pictures. Did you get pictures? Yeah, I have them. I don't know if you want to give us a quick rundown on that, Mr. Underwood. It looks, the pictures look beautiful. Thank you. And it, so it's now finished? It's finished. The only thing left to do is to uh, install the cove base in the hallways. Um, we had that on order because we wanted to match the, what was there at one time, um, just to bring it back to its, you know, it's. I'm sorry, install what? It's cove base. It's um, cove base. It's what goes in between the floor and the wall. The, so the, I, 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 the baseboard. The baseboard. Okay. Baseboard. Okay. So it's the vinyl cove. So you base. just need some baseboard in the front hall. The front. In, in all in all of the hallways. Oh, in all yeah. the hallways. We finished the classrooms because we went with, it with a slightly different color in the hall in the classrooms. But I really wanted to make sure or do my best to to bring it back to how it looked originally. You know, when it was built in '92. Um, so we had that in order. That should be in. Um, I'm hoping any day now, but if, but I would expect it to be installed be sometime next week or maybe even the weekend, and that will fit, that will complete the um, the repairs to the school. I, I always say that you have to try to find the silver lining in the in the in you know in, in anything, and I really do think that although it was tragic for the school and um, you know tough for everyone to go through, now that it's can finished, it, it looks better than it did before the flood. Um, I know that the rooms that were able to take the old and outdated carpet out and replace with VCT tiles, those teachers are, are, are thrilled about it. We did the same thing in the, uh, the computer lab. We were able to take that, that uh, carpet out and the old desk that was attached to the floor and replace that all with VCT tile. It just gives it a much cleaner, much more sanitary. Right, the carpet look. is not. So that pi this picture of the library, yeah. Is that one that it, the carpet yeah. was removed? The library, yeah, the library was the only one that we, it was the only part of the building that we kept the carpet in. I won't say kept the carpet, we replaced it with carpet. With carpet. carpet. And, and because it's because of where it is, you know, the, the libraries and auditoriums, you really want that sound barrier. Right, you want it to be quiet. ECT may look a little bit nicer, but it doesn't give you that that sound cushion that you'd want in a library in an auditorium. So which picture shows a floor that was carpet that is now this other all three, All three classrooms. Oh, the, oh so these yeah. classrooms used to be carpeted. They were carpet. In the, in the computer lab also. And then there's one picture from inside the library looking into one of the smaller offices. Um, that teacher had requested that um, we replace that with BCT tile and we were happy to oblige. Thank you. So I, and I know I gave you a heads up that I was gonna ask you this, Mr. Underwood, I love to learn from our mistakes. Yeah. 
Um, and I know this project, the, the wing suffered mightily for about a month, right? Absolutely. Because even everybody was out on February vacation and nothing was able, right. or, I don't know if anything was done that week. So um, what, what do you think was the, the takeaway on in terms of the, I mean, it seems to me if it was called an emergency, we wouldn't have had to go through that two week bid process. So what, what would you say in an, so I, I also thought it was going to be a, an emergency waiver and we'd be able to get a, a contractor in right away. We, the very next day after the flood on that very first Monday, we had a contractor in that was on state contract. We were assuming that we would be able to hire that contractor and work would begin right away. The, pro, the reason why it did not meet the uh, emergency waiver is because the flood happened. It started on a Saturday night. We, we seen it on a Sunday morning. We worked around the clock. We mitigated the water which was the emergency. Once the, once the water was, was removed, there was no more emergency. And that's how it was explained to me by uh, uh, Mike Vaughn, the city procurement officer. Had we, you know, if, if it happened on a Monday morning and we were able to call, um, you know, Mike Vaughn and, and get that information, but, you know, it, it, in hindsight, on a Sunday night, you know, it, it, we had been working around, we were cleaning up the water. We were, we were doing what we thought was the, the I, best But I avenue. would say you still want to get the water up as quickly right. as you can. Right. So we, we, I, his I solution really was let the water sit for another day, and then you could say it was an emergency? Yeah. Or, or in hindsight, I, maybe I could have. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out and it, if it ever, hopefully won't happen again. Is there an avenue to call on a Sunday night for an emergency waiver? Is there somebody you can wake up? I don't right. know those answers today. Right. It'll certainly be something I'll find out right. uh, for you, and I can give you an answer on that next time. In hindsight, maybe it should have been something we looked at, but it was 8 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday at zero degrees, and we had been fighting water breaks around the clock. Well, so it was just another get in there, clean it up, do what we had to do. And, um, you know, we just assumed that it was going to be an emergency waiver. It felt done, and that's what, that's what really slowed it down, too. Right. We lost one day by having another vendor in there, uh, waited another day for that quote to come in, and then you know, found out, no, we need three quotes, and that kind of slowed that for that next week. Yeah, because yeah, it was clear from the timeline you gave us that your team was in there around the clock, that whole, the right, right for that whole weekend, uh, but then there was two weeks that nothing happened because we were trying to get that third bid. And meanwhile, you know, wasn't a good situation for the kids and the staff at the wing, but. Well, but it, was, it does look great now, and I'm yeah. sure everybody's happy. But it was the third. The third bid came in a week, but then you have to go through getting the you know getting the contract signed, right? Getting their getting their bonding. So that, you know, even then it was still a couple of days after that, and then after that they have to order the supplies. They're not going to. It was a seventy-five thousand dollar repair on the BC tight tile, and no company was going to order supplies without a purchase order in hand. Right. So it all took a couple of days. Order supplies, and once they order the orders did get uh, <coughs> supplies did get ordered. There was even a couple of days, you know, before that came in. So everything took a couple of days, what amounted to three, four weeks before right. it got finished. Great. All right. Well, thank you. I think there was a real good situation out of that, Ms. Doherty, because at like at four o'clock, and talking to Mr. Underwood, like the preliminary decision was to close the school because everyone was tired, and then myself and Mr. Underwood actually went. Uh, to the school and to the custodians credit around the whole district Mr. Underwood was able to um, rally other custodians to come to the wing and myself and Mr. Underwood and Mr. Luna uh, were there as well and I think we were able to dismiss everyone at like nine and yeah. um, the school was uh, miraculously able to open so contrary to that we could have been out of school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, Thursday, and I think that would have had a larger negative impact on the sure. community. So I don't know if that cut out to everyone. Yeah, no, that's a good point. You were able to, they still had school. That's yeah. true. And the initial decision was it was impossible to have school, I think. So right. So kudos to your team, Mr. Underwood. I, it really, kudos to Dr. Holland and Dr. Boyd, because I, I'll be honestly, at 4 o'clock, we had given up. Um, we had started working at six o'clock that Saturday morning by four o'clock Sunday, I really had nobody else that wanted to work. They were literally saying, you know, Rick, I'm, I'm done. Um, it was Dr. Boyd and Dr. Hall that said, hey, you know, please ask them if they can stay to, to open school tomorrow. 
opening school the next day is a deciding factor for the custodians to stay. They knew if we didn't stay, there was no school. So, you know, I think it was a team, I really do think it was a team effort. Dr. Hall uh, and the principal also were, were actually helping hands um, that day, and so it was two more extra people, and we may not have opened even without them. So I thank you to everybody. We got a cafeteria, a lady came in as well to yeah. help out in the kitchen, so. That's good to know, thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Motion to adjourn by Ms. Del Rossi. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming out, and we will do our best.